Okay, I'm going to show you uh, just a quick capability I added today. So I've got this drop down select box. Um, this is tied to a preference, which is kind of cool because it's kind of like a key value store in um, Apex, and Apex just handles uh, saving that uh, for you when you make changes on the submit. So um, that is pretty neat discovery, and it was perfect for this. These other fields are actually. Uh, tied to a table, although target weight could be tied to this, reminder time certainly, and a phone number, uh, that's not really a preference, so that might better go in um, a table. And you can watch uh, in some uh, YouTube's channel, I-N-S-U-M, uh, Apex Consulting Company, I think, and uh, the very first video they do on their weekly Friday um, five-minute things is about this, and that's where I learned about this because I didn't actually know much about it. I'm glad I did. So anyway, when I change uh, this to light or dark, it changes my theme and it also remembers that. So when I log back in, it will um, go back to that. Now, I know there's a built-in ability to put that down here in the footer. One, I didn't want it in the, footer, in, the, in the footer. And two, anytime I did that, it would redirect back to the same page here, but it would add a query parameter and it would give me an error 400. Uh, also, I couldn't. I wanted to control the options, so I, I just want a simple light and dark mode. Um, and so, let me show you the design of this particular form here. So, <clears throat> we have this uh, text box. The text box is a select list, and that is uh, static values. And you can see I've got light or dark, which are tied to the names of the two themes, Vita and Vita dash dark with spaces. You want to make sure those um, are actually exist. And um, value required, um, what else do we got? Okay, then we have, um, so anytime you change that, that'll get changed as that preference. We have, um, oh, data source. So our data source is a preference, our preference super loser light dark mode, and uh, that will load that value for us, okay. Uh, Preload it when we load the form. So we have a dynamic action anytime this changes, um, we are going to, uh, this P8 select light or dark mode, we're going to execute some server-side code, and we're going to call some of my custom, my own custom code called change theme. I'll show you that in just a second. And we're going to pass in that P8 select light or dark mode, and we have to submit that. And so that will change the theme on the back end. So let's go look at that code. And that is right here. So these will probably be renamed a little bit because we want to understand that we're ch like we're actually changing the theme for the user, not across the board. So this will probably go. Uh, you know, I'm still working on this. Uh, got it working. Now we need to go rename things so that they really make sense. Um, this Apex Util 2 package is going to be part of this whole K2 framework. So I always have something like this that I can these packages that I can put my code in that I know I'm probably gonna use again and again as I build applications. And you're gonna be able to use this code too and improve upon it because it'll be um, open source and uh, you'll be able to do that. So we have this change theme, we're passing in a uh, theme name and um, we're calling set session style which changes it for the session and we're doing set user style. I don't think if I just call set user style, it changes immediately. I think, I'm not even sure if it changes my login. I haven't tested that, but you know, why not call them both? Um, maybe there's a reason, but if you know, tell me why I shouldn't do this. But anyway, we're calling a set session style and then we're um, calling the set uh, user style. Um, and we have some code to get our own app ID um, and get the active theme ID. Um, which is basically 42 for the universal theme. Uh, I don't know if that changes or not. So some of this stuff could be buggy and we could find some issues as we go forward uh, developing other applications, but it works in this application. And then I get the style ID for the theme name, which is a big long string of um, uh, uh, numbers. And again, I don't know if that's static or those change. So we are fetching that. And these calls are all in, uh, in the package up here. So, um, Get app ID is using Apex application G flow ID. Um, get active theme ID. Actually, am I using this? Um, yeah, yeah, that's the 42. Uh, so we're using G flow theme ID. Uh, get the style ID is actually tied to. Um, oh, actually, it looks it looks at the Apex application theme styles table, um, and uh, looks for the theme name in there. So you can look at that table. 
Um, and that's about it. So, I, you know, I think, it, I think it works, or it works here. I think it'll work in other applications as well. So um, that is all I got. I think it's a pretty cool feature. And because I want this to be very mobile friendly, you know, um, this is important because a lot of times you're going to be doing things, looking at it at night, and you want to um, not have a bright screen. Uh, so anyway, okay, that's it.